you join me today at Times Square, or more specifically from a number of vantage points overlooking 4 Times Square in Manhattan. When the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center were tragically destroyed as a result of the terrorist attacks of September 11th, 2001, New York had considerably fewer tall buildings than it does today, and the city was left with very few options for radio transmitter sites. After eyeing up proposed sites on Governors Island and neighbouring New Jersey, the city began looking at increasing the capacity and capability of existing radio sites in Manhattan. This led to the mammoth task of tripling the height of the existing tower on the top of the 700 foot 4 times square to accommodate the gap left by the World Trade Center and expand services in the area. Since then this site has been key in increasing radio and television capacity by adding combiners and connecting in additional broadcasters. With the main mass structure and all of the antennas it supports weighing in at 250 tonnes, constructing and maintaining the mast as well as the strengthening of the building itself by welding additional steel reinforcements to the main framework from the top down was no mean feat. The renovation project involved replacing the older 132 foot tower with the 385 foot tower you can see today, which can serve every FM and TV licensee authorised in the New York area. For some broadcasters, the new tower became their main transmission site, whilst it serves as an alternative for others. So, let's start at the top and work our way down as we try and identify most of the major structures on this site. Now, I've done similar videos to this on UK transmitter sites and with me being from the UK, it's much easier to get to the bottom of things. I've tried my best with this site and think I have everything correct and I hope there's no errors but this is a learning curve for me as well. At the top is this relatively modern Lambda antenna for WJLP Channel 33, a television station licensed to Middletown Township, New Jersey, as well as WNWTLD Channel 37, a television station in New York City. Now, I mentioned channels there, and these are known as virtual channels, the number entered on a television remote. The actual digital channel for both of these stations is channel 3. At the very tip of the tower, above the antenna, is an aircraft warning light and lightning strike protection. Next up, or should I say down, is this pair of white UHF master antennas. This array is used for WNYE 25, a non-commercial independent television station in New York City, on Digital Channel 24, Virtual Channel 25. This is also the auxiliary for WNJU 47, a television station licensed to Linden, New Jersey, on Digital Channel 35, Virtual Channel 47. One of these is used for the higher range of frequencies within the band, and the other for lower frequencies. Next is the former VHF TV antenna for auxiliary transmitters designed for channels 7 to 13. It's currently only used for WNET 13, a primary PBS member television station licensed to Newark, New Jersey, on digital channel 12, virtual channel 33. Another huge antenna on this structure is this Sheevely master antenna for a large array of FM radio stations. It operates as the main transmitter antenna for WKCR on 89.9, as well as WBAI on 99.5 and WNYE on 91.5. It also serves as the auxiliary antenna for these stations as well. Further down is the antenna for WBGO, a radio station licensed to Newark, New Jersey on 88.3 FM. Next to this is a pair of microwave antennas which I can't identify, although they appear to have seen better days. Seen from further away is the former WASALD antenna, WASA being a low power Estrella TV owned and operated station licensed to Port Jervis, New York on Digital Channel 13, Virtual Channel 24. And the last of the identifiable antennas being an idle UHF array that's no longer in use. I can't be sure on what this served. One by one the antennas were raised up the antenna stand on top of the building. By the time the raising was finished the beacon was 1118 feet from street level. Closer to the roof level and near the base of the tower is a whole range of point to point microwave links that are sending signals across the city to other receive sites. 
Where these go, I can't tell, but like the ones we've covered on various sites over here in the UK, they'll be sending signals over short distances to receive points. They're super high frequency and transmit a very narrow signal in a straight line. Some will be providing simple point-to-point -point links, and others will be forming links in a chain, a way of sending these signals over long distances effectively, and there's really no shortage of microwave sites across New York City. At night, the huge radio mast is illuminated by coloured lighting, and the H&M signage on the side of the tower draws the eye over to this iconic landmark from Brooklyn Bridge, just over 3.5 miles away. So, that's 4 Times Square, a mammoth transmitter tower in the heart of New York, whose gigantic antennas serve millions of TV and radio sets within the area.